All right, let's jump right in. So this video, we're gonna look at how we can change the look of the default UI, which Swagger gives us. Um, the UI isn't bad, but there might be times in your development phase where you actually need something customized, right? So maybe you need uh, this change to your company name, and maybe you don't really need this, you know, these two boxes over here. Uh, we wanna learn how to essentially configure um, swagger to look completely different. Now the first thing we need to understand before we actually start looking at code is to understand the extensibility points with using Swashbuckle and this is specifically for .NET. In other languages I'm sure this is done differently but if you're using Swashbuckle there are essentially um, a couple of extensible uh, extensibility points uh, that you can use in order to change the look and feel of Swagger. So if you come to GitHub, Domain Drive, Dev, Swashbuckle, and search for customizations via config interface, it specifically says that in order to change the look and feel, you actually need to inject your own HTML, CSS, or JavaScript if need be. Let's take a look at how we're going to do this. Okay, let's jump into Visual Studio. I have my project set up and I'm going to open the swagger.config file. So this file essentially contains all of the configuration changes that you need to be able to manipulate Swagger to bow to your command. If you scroll down, there is a section called Enable Swagger UI, which is here. And we are going to uncomment this line of code. And we are going to modify this so that we can actually inject our own CSS. So next, what I'm going to do is to come to the project, I'm going to right click, create a new folder, and I'm going to call this, let's call this custom content. So inside the custom content folder, I've just added two new files, .NET latest.css and index.html. Now you can feel free to name your CSS file anything you want, however, in terms of the index.html file, this has to be named exactly so, otherwise the customization will not work. There's one other thing we need to do though, in order for these files to be injected into um, Swagger, we actually need to change the build action on each file from, um, from content to an embedded resource. So we'll just make those two changes right now. All right, so first of all, let's look at how we can change our index file to change the structure of the page. That's the default page which comes with Swagger. Now, if you go to this URL here, domain driven devs, swashbuckles, um, hashtag injecting custom content, they give you a template that you can use as a starter so you don't have to write everything from scratch and that can be found here. So I've copied that into my project um, as you can see here, um, there are a couple of places you need to note where you're going to have to make changes. So um, over here in the URL, um, I've copied um, the, the default URL for the JSON, which will be generated when Swagger runs. And I'm going to copy this URL into uh, this JavaScript area here, which defines our URL. Um, I have modified the um, title of the page to be .NET Latest API, and I've changed it so that I've removed the two boxes and the Explore button you saw up there as well. Um, this div is the container, which will actually hold um, this content over here. So that's just a brief summary of what we're doing inside of the HTML file. And of course, I've also copied some styles in there. Um, I'm not going to go through that. That's not the purpose of this tutorial. Jumping back to our Swagger config file, uh, we're going to add references so that this actually is meaningful. So <clears throat> it's asking for an, as an assembly um, reference. And we're going to come up here. Uh, and we're just going to copy this this assembly to come down and change this here um, this is the most important thing you need to note so um, in order to build 
this particular string um, to inject the style sheet, um, you essentially need to follow conventions of your project name, folder, and then the file that you have added. So in our case, the project name is Swagger Swashbuckle and the folder name is custom content. So then essentially this is what we will have for the CSS file. If we switch over quickly to our UI, you can see that I have this weird space which just came up and um, it's telling me that my CSS file um, was actually injected. And we can <clears throat> actually um, verify this by looking at uh, the source. So you can see here, Swagger swash special dash custom content dash dot net latest dot um, dash CSS. So our CSS is being applied now to uh, the page. So for the last piece of this, and essentially that's to modify the structure of the page, I'm going to add one more line of code. And that is essentially telling it to add another custom asset. Um, the convention follows. This is the project name, the folder, and the name of the file. All right, so that should do it. Let's take a look at what we have. And voila, this is our new Swagger UI, nicely configured to our specifications. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Have a nice day.